So I'm uh, Noé Soulier, I'm a French dancer and choreographer. I started making pieces when I was in school and the kind of work I've been making uh, has been focused on, on, on trying to develop um, an, a specific approach to movement, which is movement motivated by practical goals, uh, such as heating, throwing, avoiding, and so on. And the reason for that is that uh, the big movement vocabulary uh, of the past, like ballet or modern dance, uh, Morris Cunningham, uh, Trisha Brown, uh, William Forsyth, in the analysis I had of, the, of these uh, vocabularies, uh, movements were very much defined in terms of, of, of geometry, of shapes, of lines, in terms of, of mechanics, in terms of weight, forces and so on. Um, and so I, I thought there was an opportunity for another approach to movement uh, with these very simple practical goals. And the feeling I had is that when you, when you approach movement in that way, even though they, they do these actions towards imaginary objects and, and, and they do, there's a lot of distortions that makes that you cannot recognize the action like a, a mime or like a, it, it doesn't become a narrative. I have an interest in, in movement that are not organic, in movement that are counterintuitive, in movement that, because I think they are also part of of the excitement of the of, of, of the physical experience, you know, uh, and this is something, for example, that I find very strange and enjoyable in, in Balanchine or for, or, or, or Merce Cunningham, for example. It's not organic, and you can really see the struggle to like, oh my god, like how do they go from that to that? It's been really interesting because in the process that I have, I never show a movement phrase. So I always give very specific tasks. So I will ask dancers to improvise. And then we, we make the tasks more and more precise with you know, specifying directions, body parts, uh, ways of transitioning from one movement to the next. And the reason for that is that I don't want my way of moving, my style, to um, be the model that everyone has to embody. But I try more to create a common approach that's very precise, but that can be embodied in very different ways by, by, by the dancers. What I, what I liked is that I, I, I came here with, I, I knew I, I was curious about this relationship with, with ballet, and I knew this was maybe an opportunity to explore that, but I didn't know how we were going to do it and, and what was going to come out of it. So, we have been really exploring that together. And I think, like sometimes when you think of making a piece for uh, you know, a, a famous company like NDT, and things, you're like, okay, I, I should do something I, I, um, I already kind of control so that I can make something that, that, that will be good enough. You know? uh, and I think that's very dangerous because often when you do that, you actually do a lesser version of what you've already made. I, I thought, okay, well, I, I want to try something I've never made uh, here, and I want to try something I don't understand. So that's, that was a starting point in some way. If you also, if you make movement very willfully, trying to craft it movement by movement, which I did for a long time, the problem there is you get caught in your compositional habits. It's another kind of patterns. What I'm trying to do right now is to play one against the other. So to give tasks, which will put the improvising dancer in a state where they won't be able to rely on the pattern that they know too much, and other patterns, other transitions, other logic will come out. And these are more intimate, these are more specific to them. Mm -hmm.